Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the Burgers and Fries podcast, your Bob's Burgers companion podcast. With you... Almost. Uh, almost. Almost, as always. Yeah, yeah. With you now, this week, mm-hmm. is Brian and Ryan. I am no longer dead. I came back to life. You're not. You, and uh, yeah, I, had... I still sound a little raspy, a little a little congested, but I'm but I'm podcast ready. Yeah, we uh, he couldn't miss the closing episode. Like he missed the first two episodes of the season, so yeah, we had to it make was do bad. that. It was... Yeah, I, I well, I was working for the first two. Mm-hmm. I was I was gone for work. You were, and uh, I'm actually going to be gone for work next week mm-hmm. as well, and later this week. So we really need to fine double, tune our double dip this week. Yeah, double dip this week. Get our get our we episodes should be in doing when we can, anyway. which we should be doing anyway. And we got out of habit of doing it. We were mm-hmm. really good at it. Yeah. Uh, so we need to start doing that when I get back um, mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. Uh, when I'm back from from Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Viva Rock Vegas. <clears throat> yeah, Viva. No, but no, just <laughs> no. We're not gonna we're not gonna mention that Flintstones sequel. Actually, no, it was a prequel, wasn't it? It was how they met. Yeah, it was a sequel movie, but it was a prequel story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With completely different actors and actors. Of course, yeah. You yeah. you you can't afford to have John Goodman twice, apparently. Apparently, well, I don't think he'd want to do it. It just sounds bad. That's true. But then again, he did do King Ralph, so I don't know. You know, I don't know. I guess whatever. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be doing part two today. Yeah. Of of the. Uh, Season finale for season four. Yeah, we uh, last week I had a very special guest come on and do mm-hmm. it, and I told her that she only had to watch the first part because I wanted Brian to come back and do the second part. Mm-hmm. It was only fair that Brian gets to end the season because he didn't start it. And I did not. No, we had we had uh, Jeff and KSK filling in. Yeah, and then Molly had to fill in. Yeah, so it was just kind of so. Yeah, it's I, I'm basically uh, I I am useless. You're you're like Dwight from The Office now, and I'm like <laughs> I'm like Jim or something, right? right? Where, like... where Dwight's in every ep- Dwight's the only one that's been in every episode. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Hey, there might be a time where I'm not, so it's it might be coming. And hopefully, not to say that you know, hopefully it happens. Hopefully, I'll be here. You know, we had at least one original. Yeah. You know, doing doing the podcast. Be, it wouldn't be burgers and fries if we had to have Case Gay and Jeff do their own podcast together. How yeah. weird would that be? Um, <laughs> it would be a little weird. I'd feel I'd feel like you know I don't know. I, I it would be very bizarre. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you know this is this is something that we've been doing for over a year now. Yeah. With what are we sixty episodes? Seventy three. Seventy three. Wow. Seventy three. This is seventy three. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Wow. Okay. So. Yeah, craziness. Anyway. Yeah, we're hitting magical number 100 soon in, yeah, both, we'll, we'll episodes, in both our yeah. episodes and in the Bob's Burgers episodes. Although I don't think they had a special 100 episode, so. It was just the see. 100th episode. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't, they, they didn't do anything special for it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, which is fine. Most people don't. It's just that, that's that magical syndication number that people used to say was a, was a good selling point to sell your right. TV shows. Because you get to, plenty of variety. For people to watch, it's like, oh, this show again. I like better off Ted. Like we only can watch that once every couple of years because there's only two seasons, and each season is pretty short. There's only there's like 20, 30 episodes maybe of that show total in the two seasons that it existed. So you watch it once or twice through. You already kind of know things that are going to happen. But when you watch things like Friends or The Office or you know Futurama, they've lasted so long that you know, oh hey. You know, this is something that you could pick up on, you know, on the, on the, on the next rewatch, or something that you may have missed entirely, or an episode that you can't quite remember how it ends. Like I've seen every episode of Friends, but my wife and I are going through it again. Um, you know, when we have free time, and we were watching—I forget what the episode is, but you know, I just I couldn't remember how it ended. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I kind of have to pay attention to this one because it don't doesn't sure. you know didn't quite stick with me. So yeah, that's the the magic hundred kind of gives everybody variety. You mm-hmm. know, kind of back to your point. So it's view, you know. If you wanted to sell your show, if you had a hundred, oh, that was a pretty good, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know, I guess litmus test to say if it was going to be, you know, syndic- syndicationable or not. Yeah, well, it was just that that was a, a good number. It was just the number you could say. Well, you've got a hundred episodes now. You can, and I don't know if there was any unwritten rules and what started that. I haven't done my yeah, TV know. research mm-hmm. on that. It's not a huge deal, but yeah, we're going to get to our number one hundred so we can get sold to syndication. That's right. That's right. And then get that sweet, sweet syndication money that we've all and been then, wanting so much. Yeah, and then and then Bob's Burgers will hit there, but we got to finish up season four first. Yes, we should do that. So previously, before, yeah, I just said before the podcast, I just said I don't want to ramble and what you I did. what have we been doing. This entire you just time. did. I've, I've been rambling. So previously, terrible. In the previous terrible episode, job. we had uh, Bob first wanting to sell the wharf mm-hmm. and then deciding against selling the wharf. Actually, first he didn't, then he did, and then he didn't. Yes. So we kind of did a full circle with him, uh, and he also convinced Mr. Fishoder to sell and then not sell. While that's happening, 
Tina was protesting the the the, the destroying the destruction. Yes, of the Louise, war. and I am so sad that I missed this this recap because this is one of my favorite Louise moments where she just goes in and she just kind of starts bossing Tina around and she you know basically takes a bike lock and puts it around her head and chains her up to Mr. Goiter. And he's like, and then like in the end, like, you hear swallow this and like rubs her throat, and then Tina swallows the keys. Like, and that's how you lock your sister to a horse, a wooden horse. Mm-hmm. And that was, and that was the end of that. I thought that was so. So funny. we're going to conclude that this week with World War II, the warpening. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically as we left off the episode, Felix has Mr. Fish Odor, Kelvin, and Bob at gunpoint. Yes, so he's pretty much taking them hostage. Mm-hmm. So they're pretty much it's Linda and the kids out to rescue uh, Bob and I guess Calvin to an extent. Um, this was the following week, May 18th, 2014. This was written by Lizzie and Wendy Molyneux, directed by Jennifer Coyle. Um, before we pause and let you watch the second part, if you haven't done so already, Brian, I don't know if you listened to last week's episode after we recorded, was there anything that we missed that you wanted to cover? I listened to a hunk of it, and the only thing that I would want to go over again, and just for the funny factor, Mm -hmm. is, is, and, and... You know, you and Molly covered it pretty well, but just the the arm hair factor, sure, of the so of we'll, the relationship with the arm hair. That... Sure. So let's let's pause. Okay. Okay. We'll watch this episode. Sure. We'll let people watch it. We'll put a bump in here. We'll come back and we'll start off with some arm hair. So you stick around for that <laughs> awesome discussion. Okay. Oh man, we're really gonna bring them back now. <laughs> Quit squirming around, Bob. Do you have worms? Because uh, I do, and you're making them crazy. I'm trying to get my phone out of my back pocket. <laughs> I can't reach it. Mr. Fisher, you need to get it for me. Oh, all right. Ooh, ooh, that's unfortunate. What is? Your butt. Oh, sorry? Up here, you're okay, but down here, it gets bad. Okay, just pull the phone out. Okay. Flip it open. Really? You have a flip phone? Yes, it works fine to make calls, and that's what phones are for. Nonsense, Bob. Phones are for playing tiny games about fruit on. Just hit the call button, Mr. Fisher. It'll dial Linda since I called her last. Ah. And we're back. Mm-hmm. Let's talk arm hair. Let's talk like, arm hair like first. Like you promised. Yeah. So we'll we'll get to the to the end of the episode because it you know it has a it has a very good conclusion. But we're gonna start with arm hair, mm-hmm. which is in no way related to this episode at, nope. at this present moment. Nope. So go ahead, Mister Arm Hair. What would you like to talk about? I I just wanted to talk about how weird and bizarre, and and almost mesmerized that these fish odor boys are by Bob's arm hair. Mm-hmm. And I think it, and this isn't the first time that this has happened. And I, I like that this is kind of a running gag now with the show and the fish odors and Bob. And, and I just, I, I think they, they did a really great job of, you know, kind of writing in like how weirded out Bob is with the arm hair and how like, oh no, it's like a, you know, it's like a superpower basically. He can get Mr. Mm-hmm. Fish Odor to do anything because he has this crazy arm hair and, you know, he wants to, yeah, have you tried combing it this way? You know, kind of thing, and, and, and Mr. Fish is kind of rubbing his arm hair and trying to, you know, play mm-hmm. with the arm hair. Just, it's just so bizarre that they're just infatuated with it. And I think it's, I think it's very funny. And I, I just wanted to reiterate that point as being one of my, I'll say, points that stand out the most. Mm-hmm. But uh, just one of those just bizarre moments that that gets you just, man, like what, like what was going on when they wrote this. But it's funny. It works. So yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad they did because it's funny. So yeah. Anyway, we can, we can start talking episode two, part two, of, sure. of of the finale. So I'm gonna let you sure. take front oh, because boy. you <clears throat> didn't do last week. I didn't do last week. So first impressions of the season four finale of how the whole warfening wraps up. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like this episode. I think. First impressions are that it tied itself up very nicely, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's not any loose ends. There, there's you know, it, it, it ends in typical sitcom fashion, so to speak, where sure. everything is saved, but you know, nobody really goes to jail, right? Fanny you know, does. Fanny's going well, to jail. Fanny goes to jail, but but, but not Calvin or not, uh, not Felix. Felix, thank you. Well, yeah, but he, he doesn't go to jail because because Calvin's like, look at him, he's not he's not going to last a day. Gonna last a day in jail, right? And, and just this, this kind of brotherly rivalry is really what it was all about, right? It wasn't really about, you know, Felix didn't want to really kill Calvin, right? He didn't really want to do it. Like, he came in the last minute and saved him, right? He was having all of this, you know, it's like, it's like how far is too far, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. And this was too far. He went back down to, to, to untie them and save them is, is why he went down there. Now, he didn't do that, of course, but, you know, he, he realized that this, okay, this is too far, mm-hmm. right? I can't do this. This is ridiculous. This is murder, yeah. right? And so, I mean, he 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 really was doing it 
because he was trying to, I mean, let's be honest, he was trying to do it to impress Fanny. Well, and who uh, wouldn't? She, she sings like a goddess. Like, who, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't do <laughs> anything for Fanny? Yeah, I still, she's, she's I, quite the woman. I still can't get enough of Jordan Peele doing that voice. It's just I, so... And, here, and I didn't originally know that that's who did the voice. When I watch these episodes, I don't go in to see who's doing guest voices. Yeah, I, well, I didn't... We, we watch the episode. Mm-hmm. Well, I, at least I do. Mm-hmm. I watch the episode, and I just kind of absorb all of it, and I'm like, I'll make a funny note. Oh, man, that lady talks really funny. And then you said it was Jordan Peele, and I'm like, shut up. No, it's not. And then I looked it up. I'm like, holy crap, it is. Yeah. So, you know, when we when we do the little bit of research that we yeah. do before no, we, it sounded before we like podcast. It sounded like his when he does his scorned girlfriend voice on Keen, Pe- Keen Peel. So automatically I'm mm-hmm. thinking, oh yeah, I think that's Jordan mm-hmm. Peel. And I look it up and of course it was. But no, it was, you know, carried over into this episode. It was pretty much the same as the first. Fanny was still kind of a one note character, just kind of a money grubber, wants to have her, her recording studio, wants to yep. have her dance club. Yep. Think she can sing the greatest. Um, I mean, to be fair, not a great singer, but the lyrics weren't horrible. They were very catchy. So, did Jordan write those? Did you know Lauren and the music crew kind of get in with those little, you know, quick little lyrics that rhyme? Yeah. Right, the the Miss Hey Mister Dance Floor. Like, come on, like that's kind of catchy, right? So it was always fun to kind of listen to. You know these these little jingles and just kind of wonder. It's like, okay, is that just the actor ad libbing, or did they really write something down like that? Because mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, because we all know the music in Bob's Burgers is wonderful. Yes, it's always been a huge a huge plus for us when we record mm-hmm. is is any of the music. Just get some fun original yeah. music. We, speaking, we're speaking suckers of, for music. Speaking of music, we had the reprise of uh, "Nice Things Are Nice." Yes. Uh, in this case, it was "Bad Things Are Bad." Bad things are bad, like being tied up to the dock yep. and the tides coming in. And then we had again just another 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 time of Fanny singing Mr. Dance Floor, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought that was that whole sequence was pretty funny. And we'll get to that at the end. Uh, but do you have any other first impressions or any other first thoughts before we kind of just quickly run through? First the, the thoughts ending. is how great Kevin Klein is. Sure, is is kind of ties because we kind of get yeah because it was right when we start to tie talk about the story that's where we're kind of treated to is a lot of dialogue from, you know, Mr. Fishoder. And I love Kevin Klein. Anybody who's listened to this podcast knows that he's one of my favorite characters. It's Mr. Mm-hmm. Fishoder and it's Louise. And those are my two favorite characters. So when we get a very heavy Mr. Fishoder uh, episode, such as these, this one and then the one previous to this, um, I'm all for it, right? Yeah. I love his, his, his line delivery. It's so bizarre. It's not like a normal person talks. Mm-hmm. Right, his he has a very different cadence to what everybody else is doing in the town, even his own brother. Right, yeah, uh, we know Zach Galifianakis is doing doing a Felix Fischer, and so he also has a little different, uh, you know, I guess cadence in, in his speech. But but Kevin Klein takes it to just a no, a totally different I, level. And I'm wondering if it's because he's so rich and he grew up, but he, you know, whatever, whatever he does, however, however he he sculpted that character and how that character is supposed to talk is is fantastic I, well i feel like they both embody what these two warring brothers mm-hmm. should be mm-hmm. like you do have calvin you have kevin klein doing it as the the the, the superior the older brother that i've got experience i'm you know i'm going to show you how rich i am and then you've yes. got felix or zach galifianak is doing this voice where it's i i'm the younger brother i had everything given to me this you know just the way that his cadence like you said his cadence is i always want more mm-hmm. you know i i you know the whole reason he came back in this season was because he lost his inheritance he, yes. he got rid of it he yes. spent it all yes so he had to do some of the landlording mm-hmm. for for mr fish and now he's here to stay he's which the landlording was making a bathroom mm-hmm. which we got to see again and see in the previous episodes yes. so i guess they'll arrest felix too no I told him fanny was responsible for everything what look at him bob we can't send him to jail he'd Hate it there. He tried to kill us. Not really. We were just uh, wrestling, like brothers. Wrestling, tussling, bonding. I don't know. Let's kind of just briefly go through this episode sure. because there isn't too much that goes on. It is pretty much no. just the AC. And, and I was thinking about that before we were going to talk about this episode. Is that you're right? There's not much going on, but what is going on though is very mm-hmm. big. It's very important, and 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 the writers do a great job of bringing in the suspense. That's supposed to be going on in this sure. episode. Yep. Right. So yeah, we can we can jump right in, and and we're we're like you know so we're yeah, so we're right under the dock. We were under right the away. dock. They're already tied up. Well, now um, right well, right yeah. as they're getting tied up, the best line is, um, 
you know, Bob's like, well, why do you have to tie me up? He's like, you gotta kill the witnesses. And then, <laughs> uh, uh, Felix says, you gotta kill the witnesses. And Calvin's like, that's, yeah, I gotta kill the witnesses. That's true. I, and Bob's like, well, don't, don't agree with him. Yeah. Right? Because Bob's trying to get away, right? He's trying to go get help. But so, he's also, but then also at the same time, he's playing the least kind of antagonist. He's like, you hmm. know, pull the trigger, you baby. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, come he's on, just baby. Him on. He's egging him on. He's incapable of doing it. He's he's incapable of doing anything. He's not gonna shoot us. Yeah. <laughs> right, and then uh, and then you know, Bob's like, "Come on, come on, I got kids." And then and then Mr. Fisher goes, "Oh, come on, Bob, those kids aren't that great." <laughs> just the way he says, it, "Come on, now you can't yeah. believe that he's gonna spare you because of those children." You're probably better off without you. So right. then, yeah. So so pretty much the the, the story takes place in two places. It is the restaurant mm-hmm. where the family's trying to figure out where Bob might be because he's been gone for a little bit, about, what, they, I think they said 45 minutes. Um, and so They get really they're, upset Well, they're at, when I think, he doesn't come back. Like, yeah, Linda well, is legitimately pissed. Well, they're at the pier, and then then they're like, I bet you he's back at the restaurant. So we're mm-hmm. going to go back to go open for dinner. Right. And... They're just thinking he's with Mr. Fish Order, which he is, but they're like, he's just having boys night out or something. Well, like originally that. when they were going to the restaurant, Linda thought that she, he was already there. Like mm-hmm. he, yeah. must, he must be yeah. back at the restaurant getting ready for the dinner rush. So she takes the kids, they go back, oh, he's not here, he must be out with Mr. Fish, like, because they're celebrating their mm-hmm. big deal, right? She figures that they're just out celebrating, it's like a boys night thing. Mm-hmm. But then he stays out way too long, and she's like, that's it, I'm going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Like, this is, like, he needs to be here, even though there's not a single customer in the restaurant. <laughs> So while they're at the restaurant figuring out where Bob might be, and have you know, since they're having boys night out, they're gonna have a girls' night in uh, with Gene, of course. With Gene, yeah. Um, <laughs> who always, of course, he's he would join in. Girls' night in featuring Gene. The uh, Bob and Kelvin are underneath the the pier, and then Felix is looking for Fanny, you know, because Fanny's like, "I get away from me. You can't have any of this." But he he says he took care of the problem, <laughs> and they get into you know again a big scuffle and everything right. and. Uh, the, so to, I guess to, to to alleviate the the frustration that Fanny's having, Felix is like, "Let's go look around the pier. And you can show me where the nightclub will your, be." Your, your recording was it? No, it's nightclub. Nightclub. I thought it was a recording studio. No, he he says, "Let's walk around the pier okay. and or walk around to see what where that nightclub will be." Sure. And so he starts pointing at places, and she's not. Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of doing it. Yeah. Um. And she's like, what about there? No. Oh, okay, yeah. well, what about there? No. And it's like, she's not happy with yeah. any of it. So I thought that was kind of funny. She's like, no, not there. No. So he, he kind of gets back into her good graces by saying, you know, the problem is taken care yeah. of. Because, again, we can, we can be together now. The only thing she wants is to have the recorded studio in the in the, in the the in the nightclub. Right. So she can sing with her dance floor. That's right. Uh, it's her big break. Yeah. So so Bob and Bob's realizing he's got his phone in his back pocket. Mm-hmm. So he wants to... Uh, get out the phone and and try to text it. But you know, so basically, Bob and, and Mr. Fisher have to work together, mm-hmm. and it's a flip phone. Mm-hmm. And I thought this was really <laughs> funny because because uh, Calvin says, uh, you know, it's you know, phones are not for making phone calls. Yeah, they're for, for playing tiny games about futon. Yeah, <laughs> which is so great. When just the the delivery, it's like no, they're not for phone calls. They're for they're for playing tiny games about futon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they try mm-hmm. to call first. So basically, it's kind of like uh, you have to T nine it. Yeah. Well, no. But first they first they try calling. Right. And it's kind of muffled. They can't really hear anything. Yes. Because the way because the receiver's too far away from their face and the waves are coming in. And it's very loud and the noise from uh the uh, from the wharf above them mm-hmm. uh, is also very loud, which is uh, uh, a little clue. To how Linda yep. finds them later in the episode. So, so first they think it's um, like a like they're at, like he's at a bar mm-hmm. with him, and then they call back and uh, they think it's a butt dial. He, and some I forget who it said it was. Yeah, that's his butt voice. Yeah, um, it's gotta be Tina. I think they called. I think they called what four times. And, yeah, three four times. Yeah, yeah, three and, for sure. And then they tried to call nine one one, and they didn't understand. Nope. And nine one one, I guess, thought they were probably prank calling. Probably. So then they try texting. And so this is the old T9 style of texting. Um, so Bob's the one who's trying to type on mm-hmm. the phone. And then they push send. And they they end up sending the message. I, and uh, do you have written down what the message was? I don't actually So the no. first message they send is, help, I'm tired, yo. Yes. And... 
you know, so they're trying to figure out what that means. Yep. And it's Louise that comes up with the idea to maybe it's autocorrect. And then she goes to chalkboard and writes down everything that tired yo could autocorrect yep, to. But we're not there yet. Because then they send a picture of of themselves. Supposedly right. trying to trying to get tied up. But it ends up being that they take a picture of like Mr. Fischoder's bulge. Yeah. His butt. <laughs> his butt. Um and yeah, because it's you know it Tina knows. Because mm-hmm. she has a photographic butt memory. Photographic butt memory. Um and it looks like that and it looks like maybe that they're either tied up or could be breadsticks. Yes. Or tied up with breadsticks. Yeah. And so then this is where Louise what they did is they somehow, she was able to figure out what the auto-correction suggestions would be for Tired and Yo. Mm-hmm. And they, they one of them was, I cried y'all. Mm-hmm. One of them was, I tried blow, which Linda says, we were going <laughs> to we do, do that together. We were going to do that together. And then Teddy was right about them being tied up. Because yeah. Teddy's suggestion was that they were tied up. But Bob may have already tried cocaine, though, and she's Cab Bob. Mm-hmm. I think I also may have tried cocaine. Yep, he did. Right. And if he did, I... Uh, I liked it. Yeah, and if I did, so yeah, that's yeah. that's one of a few continuities in this yes. episode. There's another big one which we'll get to later, yeah. which which you said and yeah, totally blew me away. So then the next time that they send one, they're trying to say Felix has us under the pier. Mm-hmm. So, so while they're working on trying to figure out who tied up Bobby, and then Mr. Fishoder, the text that they got says Fix got under seven seven. Then a shrimp emoji, then the word Pierre. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Teddy's like, oh God, someone named Pierre's got him tied up. And he's yeah. force feeding him shrimp. So they go to Pierre's. Mm-hmm. Or the, that's that's the place where they first... Yeah, there's a re- there's a restaurant nearby to, right. that serves shrimp and breadsticks. All you can eat shrimp. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and that's and, where they go first, and, and so Jean's, everybody's there. And so Gene's like, come on, here comes shrimp. He's ready to eat shrimp. Mm-hmm. And this was a very glaring... For me, a very glaring goof. Yes, uh, a very episode. glaring continuity Because error. in season one, we find out that Gene is allergic to lobster. Mm-hmm. And lobster and crab and shrimp are all in the same crustacea food group. So when you're allergic to one, you are allergic to all three. Right. So he is able to eat this shrimp and not... Go into yeah, anaphylactic, going shock. anaphylactic shock. Because last time when he, ate, when he ate lobster, he got swollen, he was red, he can't breathe. Mm-hmm. Right. But the shrimp, the shrimp is no problem. He's actually carrying. He's holding his shirt up to hold, hold more shrimp as he's stuffing it in his face. Yeah. So, so they get to the restaurant. They big, get to Pierre's. Big error. They get they get to Pierre's and Teddy holds the maitre d like in a like in a sleeper hold. And he's mm-hmm. like, "Where's Bobby?" Yeah. He's getting all upset about it, and and they get kicked out of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And so now they're back to kind of they're kind of back to. Uh, square one as to where they might be so they know he's tied up but they don't know mm-hmm. where he is they go to sergeant bosco and and he's no help no and so then they sing the song bad things are bad mm-hmm. uh, eventually which during bad things are bad mm-hmm. we learn bob is a game of thrones fan because mm-hmm. he'll never uh, be able okay. to see how it ends is, if he dies. But has he ever watched it or is he just more lamenting the fact that he'll never be able to get to watch it? See, I think that he's seen it. If if this is what he's seen about... how, though? What do you mean how? They don't have cable. How Ooh, is he watching it? Maybe Teddy hooked him up with cable? Maybe. Maybe... Maybe maybe they do. Yeah, you're right, but they are... Yeah, they wouldn't, though. That would be an expense that they wouldn't be able to afford. Mm-hmm. And HBO's pretty expensive. HBO's pretty expensive when it comes down to it. Yeah. That's so I think, I think he's point. maybe lamenting the fact that he'll never be able to watch it. It's not that he's sure. a fan of Game of Thrones. Okay. I, my thought theory is he's just really upset that he'll never even get a chance to Did that ever come out like start. on DVD or something? It is. They're all on DVD. Okay, so maybe he rents them. Maybe he rents Game of Thrones or purchases them or borrows them from people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean you could go both ways. It could yeah. be either yeah. that he's never watched and he's never going to be able to or he mm-hmm. has started watching and he's never going to be able to finish right. afterwards. Because this was, this was 2004 or teen. And four or teen? Four teen. So that would have been only I think the first three or four seasons were out. So right. you know, he has halfway to go still. During its during its prime, during its heyday. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. When and... everybody is talking about it. Not so much today. But anyway. So they find out from they actually end up finding out where Bob and 
Mr. Fish order are because of Felix. Yes. Because he... They run into him at the wharf. Yeah. And he's all nervous and sweaty, and they're like, okay, this guy knows something. What's what's going on? And then he decides to... Oh, they find out, figure out, oh, Linda hears the laughing from the fun house or the haunted house mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And she realizes that they're under the pier, and so then she runs down after them, and then but he comes down after them, right? Or is yeah. it the other way around? It's first, um, well, they're going to jump in first. Yeah. And they end up not doing that. They end up they get the, the paddle, paddle boats. boats. Yep. <clears throat> Tur- take the turtle. It's the fastest. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, but, but it is. Yeah. And so, then, yeah, and that's the one that Felix comes up on. He he does. So Felix comes down first to save them because he he's does. all he's having that change of heart. Yeah. So he's getting ready to come out there. He's I think he's got the duck or the swan or something. Okay. Um. And he's here to save you, and he's going to shoot the ropes off. <laughs> oh no! Fanny comes out with a, with the turtle. Is that? I think that's what it is. I don't know. Somebody comes out with a stupid turtle. Anyway, not important. Felix goes down first. To yep. your point, I'm getting myself so screwed up. Felix comes down first. He's going to shoot the ropes off because he doesn't want to get in the water because he doesn't want to get wet. It's cold. So yeah, so first it's first it's Felix, then it's the family, and then mm-hmm. it's Fanny. Yes. And so Fanny mm-hmm. comes out, and Felix is like, I was going to kill my brother so I could sell the war, but mm-hmm. I can't do it. And so she grabs the gun from Felix and starts, you know... I think she started shooting here, or maybe she does it a little bit later. But she's like, all my life people tell me what I can't do. She, Yeah, she has this speech. She's like, I can't, she... you can't show your butt, you can't shoot people. <laughs> well, today I'm going to do both. Yep. Felix, what the hell is going on? I was going to kill my brother so I could sell the wharf and get you your nightclub. But I, I can't do it. What? I'm going now. Uh-huh, Felix. Nobody knows. What? <gasps> Fanny, what are you doing? I won't let you ruin my dreams. This is my time. All of my life, people have been telling me what I can't do. Fanny, you can't show your butt. Fanny, you can't shoot people. Today, I'm gonna do both. Oh, God. Shut up. You can't think. What else is new? Okay, Linda. You and the kids, get off your boat, get in the water, and then drown. Can't we just do the first part and splash around and have fun? Oh, come on, Fanny. I'm your gal pal. Shopping, right? (laughs) No. Out. Uh I think she shoots it now, and it ends up... You can see that it's breaking some of the wharf wood. Yes. And the water's getting higher and higher, and she's kind of holding it at gunpoint. And he's like, before I die... Bob's like, before I die, could you, you know, sing one of your songs for me? I'd really like to hear it. And he's like, uh, I want to hear the one about the dancing, and it's really loud. And you know, she's like, dancing's so loud? Well, that one's not finished yet. I'm just going to sing you Mr. Dance Floor. Mm-hmm. So while she's singing, he's pointing to Linda to... To ram the boat shaped like a turtle into the pier, into the piling that's broken. And mm-hmm. so what that's going to do is that's going to break the pier down and make it so it causes a distraction. It makes it so uh, pretty much they'll be saved. Mm-hmm. So that happens. They all dive in. The The carousel falls into the water. And Tina's, I guess, excited about that. A water burial is better than a, than a construction. <laughs> Which was so funny because right? she fought so hard mm-hmm. and protested so well, you know. To, to and, save and so, this ride, and then this little thing happens, and the whole thing just ends up going into the ocean. But then she goes, it's what the carousel would have wanted, a burial yeah. at sea. We yeah. talked about it at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But then Fanny and Felix are all wet, and Fanny's swimming away from Felix. The rest of the family gets done. We talk, and we got we kind of circle back to what we started at the beginning, where they are going to arrest Fanny. Mm-hmm. And they did. But and not then, Felix. Not Felix, because Felix is, you Look know. Look at him, he would, wouldn't last a he day. Would, he would hate it in jail. Yeah, he would, yeah, he would hate you it. You know, and he's like, they, he wasn't trying to kill me. We were yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Like brothers. And he, and, he, and uh, Mr. Fishelder ends up by, Felix, I get one free punch. You know the rules. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets, so basically this whole rivalry, if, if one of them attempts to kill the other one and doesn't succeed, then the, then the, then the survivor gets one free punch. Is that, yeah. <laughs> is that the rule to this yeah. twisted game? So Bob is negotiating with Felix to kind of keep this under wraps instead of him going to the cops. Right. So he's like, what if I give you $4,000? Mm-hmm. He's like, what? You know, you can't put a price on my life. And he's like, seven. Seven. And then three, and then Tina comes over and yeah. says two, and Luis says two, one. one. Like, Blast off. And he goes, all right, we'll just call it. Yeah, all right, we'll call it off. We'll call the whole thing off. Mm-hmm. Um, and Linda, which one of my favorite lines, is like, God, I had cereal in the morning. By nighttime, I'm getting murdered. <laughs> yep. That's quite the day. What a, what a crazy day. Um... Yeah, so they they kind of wrap it up. The Belchers are glad that they're back on land. They're uh, they're gonna go back to the regular restaurant because that's where they belong. Like you said, it kind of wraps up like a sitcom. Everything is just kind of back to normal. Yeah, I mean because they don't they, they don't save the town. They don't better their lives, right? No. Nope. I think we've we've uh, 
I think Mario said something like this, or John and said something like this. John and uh, who else do we? Steven? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that the Belchers, they can't, you know, kind of succeed because then the show doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Right? So we're never going to get to see them win the lottery, or we're never going to get to see them, you know, yeah. with super crazy business because then the show doesn't work. No. I mean, yeah, and, and even getting that money from Mr. Fish Odor, I think the closest that they ever came to that was. Well, twice. They've come close to getting money like that from Mr. Sh- Mr. Fish Order a few times. Mm-hmm. So there was the Thanksgiving, where they posed as the family of Mr. Fish Order's family, and he was giving him two months free rent, or six months or something. I forget what it was, but he was giving them that. Right. Um, and then there was this episode mm-hmm. at the end where they didn't get it. And then we'll see coming up in a Christmas episode that it happens again. And there, will, will, there will be other times. There are much other times where Mr. Fish Order's kind of dangling that carrot in front of him. And, you know, they, to get him to do something mm-hmm. or to... Well, know, a lot, some of the times way. it's, I don't want to play the landlord card, but right. he ends up doing it. This is more of a, I'm going to give you something to do something that's not exactly... It's a gray area. It's not illegal, but right. it's not quite Bob's moral ground. So mm-hmm. Bob, it would have to be worth Bob's while. And we, as we see, it never works out. And mostly, I, and like you said, like everybody else is, it, it, it shouldn't work out for them. Because then you get in the Roseanne syndrome. Right. Because they, they did win the lottery, is that, is that right, in mm-hmm. one episode? Yeah. Yep, they won the lottery for the last season before the before the, the reboot. Mm-hmm. And it just you know, that was one of those things where the show jumped the shark, nuked the fridge, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, that, that kind of wraps up the episode, the whole, yeah. the whole, the whole warfening, the World War II, the how Bob saves, destroys the town. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, you did a good job. So the two things that the one thing that I mentioned was the the the, the fish, the, the seafood allergy, which, mm-hmm. which was a very glaring omission to me. Um, it, it just, that was pretty big. And and in the, the 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 as far as like meta jokes and gags go, there weren't really any in this episode. But in the credits, you see Gene sitting on the floor eating shrimp. Mm-hmm. So it's not that he. It's not that they just said he wanted to eat shrimp. And then he wasn't, and that maybe he wasn't going to, because mm-hmm. he wanted to eat all the shrimp. But nobody makes mention of him having the allergy. And then at the end of the episode, he's just sitting there eating it. Right. Um, and I don't know, and I, I could be wrong. I don't have a seafood allergy, but I don't think you can preemptively take medicine to calm it down that yeah. much to the point where you would not. Where you could continue to eat it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have one either. But I don't think that's how allergies work. No, I mean like mm-hmm. like certain allergies like. Like with, severe food allergies like this. He's one. got a severe right. allergy, yeah. Like like yeah. with Rudy, he gets a rash on his back right. with chocolate. We right. know that from a couple episodes ago. Right. Where he's not gonna die, he's not nothing's gonna happen, he just gets a rash. Right. My my wife is allergic to apples. She can still eat apples. She just you know, she just has a little problems breathing and she gets a scratchy throat. Like that's all it is. She doesn't break out in hives, you know, she's not gonna go into anaphylactic shock. You know, mm-hmm. she just has a slight, you know, allergy to apples. Whereas Gene, you know, full on you know, red face, yeah. well, can't the, breathe, the, the joke eyes, was he always looks like puffy. this. And he's not. He doesn't yeah. always look like this except for his baby picture. But yeah, right. he just, he, you could tell he was mm-hmm. having trouble breathing. You could, right. you know, it was not good. And, it, you know, you give him an EpiPen or whatever and that helps release it. But I don't think there's anything you can preemptively take. It's less, not like he's on a medication or anything. They just didn't mention it. So that kind of, uh, kind of bothered me <clears throat> for the half, the half of the last episode. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Jokes or there is a little something um, when Louise was screaming um, that you know Bob can't be you know Dad can't be tied up. You have two children and a Louise to take care of. Mm-hmm. Right? She's just yelling out into yeah. the into the world. I thought that was funny. Um, and then the other thing I saw, which you know I always enjoy, it's not a costume change or it's not like a, a new wardrobe, but it's like kind of like a costume change where they at the end they're all wearing blankets, mm-hmm. right? The, and the, they, they're wearing the the. I forget what they're called. The shock blankets. Yeah, yeah, trauma blankets. Yes, thank you. Trauma blankets. Uh, But then Louise has her ears sticking out the front. She doesn't Mm -hmm. curl her ears back. She has her ears sticking straight out um, in front when they have the blanket on and the little hood to help uh, keep everybody warm after they've been in the ocean. So uh, I liked that. I thought that was fun to to kind of see everybody again in a different, you know, costume, so to speak. So those are the things that I... uh, that I wanted to mention. Oh, and then when they when they're going to find Bob, this is, this one's really funny. Mm-hmm. When they're going to find Bob and they're showing him the picture, and it's just Bob on the it's a Polaroid of Bob on the toilet. Yep. <laughs> and the maitre d is like, let me see that toilet again. <laughs> Make sure that he was never there. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. 
Uh, there's one thing when they're talking about when they're deciphering the text. Mm-hmm. Uh, the they say they when they first suggest that maybe it was auto corrected because Linda goes like the time. Oh no! Like uh, yeah, because then I think Jean says like the time I texted mom that I was super horny when I was really super hungry. Why would mm-hmm. I be horny? I'm not an antelope. I thought that was just kind of funny because it, it, it's just a reversal of the joke. You were thinking right. that it might be something else and it ended up being that it was about animals, which is a, a cute way because he's Gene. Gene doesn't know what that is. Right. There's still, it's, there's still the child innocence in there, but the joke is there for all audiences. You mm-hmm. know, we, we know the, the extra layer to it, but like if my kids were watching the episode, they'd be like, ha antelopes have horns. Right. You know, so it's I kinda, thought that was pretty... It's, it's kind of... I thought that was a good, a, a good clever... Works on, on all those yeah. levels. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have any other jokes to, to go through, and there was no there was no other gigs. We had the, just the carryover, the carryover burger, which was the saffron saff out burger mm-hmm. or saffron saff off burger, and then the credit sequence just was the regular credit sequence, yeah. which was a big change from last week's uh, Golden Eye James Bond, not Golden Eye, just James Bond esque mm-hmm. kind of spy movie uh, ending sequence. Right. So. Thoughts now of of this. This is the, of the season of the, finale. The duology, right? Uh, this is their first, you know, uh, it's the first two parter. T- yep, two parter. It's the way they ended the season. We get a great, you know, two songs, right? We get it's kind of yeah, the same. Song know, good things are good, and then you know the, that's yeah. the reprieve. Nice right? things are nice and bad. Things bad things are bad. Are bad. Thank you. And and you know, we we get a really good I wasn't story a, I wasn't over as, over two episodes. I wasn't as big of a fan as of bad things are bad, just because they ended up adding. You know Zeke and and Tammy. It was and a little Jimmy bizarre. I, I, and Ollie instead of Andy. This yeah. is the first and only time that one of the Silverman sisters did not have a line. Oh, okay. So, um, so Ollie was the one, or Ollie doesn't sing. So Andy sings. Uh, so so Sarah doesn't voice in this episode. Right, just, right. Just Laura just, Silverman. Just Laura does. Um, and, but, but like Regis has Rudy, they mean all these kind of people, they make a, just a really small cameo in, in the end of the episode. And, and do it just... you think it's to get more of the cast that we've seen grow throughout the season to be put into that season finale, right? Because it's the finale, we got to bring everybody back, right? Like like on stage when you do the, or when you're on Broadway and you do the finale, you have all the characters come up and they sing. Yeah, but they weren't in the first episode. So it's not like, it's not like they're reprising the first act. Of the episode, they're just in there. It's just like, uh, here's a throwaway. Because I know they're looking for their dad, and so they're. I guess they're just asking the kids. Mm. But it just kind of felt. It just kind of felt a little, just a little out of place. Not like completely out of place because it was just. You know, maybe you'll find him inside of the vase. You know, maybe he's his lines eating his face. Uh, I'll help you look after I pump my inhaler. Check out these pants; they were perfectly tailored. It just right. they were just throwaway lines like this sure. is just just to rhyme and to, to keep the song going yeah and to add these other characters into it like you said maybe it was just maybe they, it is there just to kind of have them be part of the season finale of, yeah or it, it but it just kind of it, it it just it just just felt a little off and that's why i like the nice things are nice better the bad things are bad it's they're, they're both good songs they're both very they're both cleverly written the first one definitely more so than the second one um but yeah that's that's the only thing I have of those songs. Uh, this, we can quickly talk about the special voices who came back for this episode. So obviously, we had Zach and Zach Galifianakis, Kevin Klein, Kevin Klein, Calvin Klein, Kevin Klein come in. Uh, Gary Cole was back here, as Bosco, right? Um, Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele. We talked about uh, Paula Tompkins was here as Pierre, so he you know he did the voice of the Maitre D and Randy. Um, and then very slash Rudy, Super Brian Husky, Jenny Slate, uh, Laura Silverman. So, you know, we had a big, a big outing of people who, you know, maybe only had one line or so, but mm-hmm. you know, they all, they were all there. Uh, this is the very first episode, at least as far as I can tell, <coughs> that does not have David Herman. Wow. Was he in the first part of this episode? He was. Because Mort was there in the restaurant. Yeah. Okay. No, Mort's not, not Mort. David Herman, though. Um, yeah, Mort, he was in the first one. Let me double, I can double check, see who he was. Um, David Herman in the first episode was the foreman. Okay. From the, who was breaking the. Wow, song. so he's not in 
He's not in this episode. Interesting. And I don't know if this is the first one that we've had where he's not been in it, but it was the first one I noticed that he was not in it. Yeah. Because normally there's a David Herman sighting because he's the man of many voices. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I think that's... Uh, I think that's going to wrap up the yeah. season. Yeah. Um, we'll get to, our, obviously, we'll go through the whole season in the next episode. And mm-hmm. This is, this is, this is literally just recap. about this episode. So we'll come back, we'll do the do the numbers, and let you know how this how the season ends. Okay, so I'll do the talking. No, I'll do the talking, you do the roughing up. And I'll eat the shrimp. And I'll watch Jean eat the shrimp. And I'll look around for clues. But if any of those clues are shrimp, bag them and give them to me. Hello, welcome to Pierre's. Table four, what do we have, five? Yeah, we're not here to eat. We're looking for this guy. His name's Bob and you kidnapped him! Let me at him! Give me back my oh, son! I don't have to... What are you... Please, God, let me look at the toilet picture again. You got a lot of nerve, buddy! Ow! Oh, I can't breathe! Seeing spots! Oh. Don't want to die! Wow, that guy really fainted. And barfed. I feel bad. He got really upset there. All we're trying to do is just talk to him. But he still gave me shrimp. And he said, come back any time. All right, I've crunched numbers. We're going to do something a little different for this episode. Just because it is a different kind of episode. Mm-hmm. What I've done for this episode is we're not going to talk about any episode fun bits. The reason being is because last week we covered it. And since this is technically a part two and nothing changed, we're just going to leave it at that. Okay? That's fine. So, so technically, uh, last week I gave it an 8 and your replacement gave it a 7. And that would actually be on par with what we kind of did numbers-wise for this episode. So we're just going to ignore it. That's fine. And we'll just spend our two minutes on story, humor, and another. Sure. So, are you ready? Do you got your clock up? My clock is up. All right. I actually have a lot of time because we're not going to talk about the first one. That's so, fine. Yeah, we got ready? time. Yep. All right, go. So, story. Uh, story, I gave an eight, which is the same as I gave the, the first half. So mm-hmm. I think it was only fitting that I gave the second half also an eight, just given that it was a the, the consistency was there throughout. There was no sure. there was no real break in the action. You start the episode; it's a recap of the previous episode, and you get right into it. Right. So I think that was great. It wraps up very nicely, like you said, it's kind of nice in a good sitcom fashion. It just it, everything felt like a Bob's Burgers episode should, and it just made me feel happy that everything was <laughs> solved. So yeah. it's an eight. I give Story a 9. I really enjoyed it. I liked them running around trying to figure out what was going on. Um, They did a very good job of bringing the suspense into, you know, the living room for me, Mm -hmm. right? It's not just another, oh, they'll fix this problem, you know, no, no, you know, it's not going to be a big deal. Like when they had to find the jockey. Yep. You know, uh, at the race at the race uh, track, and then this one was like, oh my gosh, like they're underwater, and you know the the water, the tide's slowly coming in, yeah. and they don't know where they are. It's just they kind have of to, the they have to text them and try and find them, yeah. right? So they did a very good job for me. So I gave it a nine. Sure, humor yeah. I gave an eight. Uh, again, I, that's a carryover from last from last one for me too. Yeah. It just felt I laughed a lot. I did chuckle. There was not as many super laugh out. I was you know laughing so loud I missed parts of the episode but not yeah. every episode is going to have that and I laughed That's okay. thoroughly enough it was a good humor we talked yeah. about the kind of layered humor in some of them that that were in the episode so that yeah. that always gives an extra props to the writers for doing that yeah lots of good humor in this episode I uh, gave humor an 8 uh, as well you know you have two children and Louise to take care of they're going around trying to find their you know trying to find Bob and the only okay. picture they have is him on a toilet so there's a lot of good moments in this uh, in this episode so I gave it an eight as well uh, and then other I gave a seven which is a down from the last episode the reason I give this a seven really comes down to the continuity issues that we had mm-hmm. the shrimp being a huge one mm-hmm. uh, and then the the first one that we talked about I forget which one that one was uh, but the, the 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 shrimp one was the glaring omission for me that felt. Uh, oh, the the blow uh, was the other yes, one. That yes. one, maybe that one, not so much. But this, right. the shrimp one definitely kind of uh, mm-hmm. hindered it a little bit. So I get a seven for me. Two minutes. Oh wow! I don't get to say. He did ramble. He yeah. got a seven. Yeah. Brian gave that one a seven. Yeah, it was um, a seven as well. So eight point one for him with the new number layout. Seven point seven for me. Seven point nine mm-hmm. uh, for that one. Which means that if we were to add these together, which I know is not super fair, but we're going to do it anyway because you were not here. Our show, our rules. Uh, exactly. You don't like it? Make your own stupid podcast. Seven point nine seven five. Great, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, Just under an eight. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. We so might round it up for that. One. We would. Well, yeah. I mean, we. No, I mean, se- yes. Yeah, se- well, you said seven point seven. Seven point nine seven. Seven point nine seven five. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. Yeah, like there's just a couple subtle differences between yeah. them. Uh, but that yeah, that rounds up. 
that that rounds up that ends that ends off and finishes off season four. Season four. Season four is done. We are not going to get all sad and reminiscent on season four because no, that is for a different episode. We've got to. That's going to be happening next week. We've got to. We got to push headlong into season yes. five. Season five. Um, I've been asleep at the wheel. I'm trying to get some more writers or artists or whomever. If you have anybody that you would like to see on the show as far as a position goes, making a specific request for a individual might be a little harder. But if I, we can get more writers, if we can mm-hmm. get you know uh, more animators, or if you want to just have the same people that we've had on, you know, let us know. We'll we'll see we'll see what we can do to bring them back because we don't know how big of nerds you are. We're we're, we're anticipating all of our listeners are giant nerds because they're listening to people talk about Bob's Burgers instead mm-hmm. of like watching Bob's Burgers. So we hope that you're like us and that we just want to sit here and nerd out and talk about animation and drawing and writing like the whole time. Sure. You know, which is what I want to do whenever we bring these people on. So uh, let us know who you want us to bring on. Um, you can check us out on Twitter, Instagram, at Burgers Fries Pod. Mm-hmm. It's very popular. If you follow us on Instagram, you always see a post uh, uh, with a little video and a clip from the episode. So you always know when we post uh, the episode up every Thursday, for the day, every Thursday, right? Um, otherwise, anything else that you need to say? No, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, I mean, everything went well for this episode. I'm glad to have you back. Yeah, then, like, good to be back. Good, good to not be feeling able... like ass anymore. And next week will be our season four review, and where we where we recap what we just watched for a whole season, sure. and look forward to season five. five. Yeah. yeah, we're we're all, we're over. We're going to be getting to the halfway point pretty soon. We're, we're pl- so, if they stop making episodes, they, they better not. They'll make me upset. <laughs> we'll never catch them now, but uh, we will sign off. We got, we've, we've got summers to catch them, yeah, so it'll true. be a couple years. That's true. So, uh, again, thanks everybody for listening. We're going to sign off for today. We are the Burgers and Fries Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Ryan. Don't you tell me no lie. I'm the Burgers and Fries.